here we are let's put the everything it's in its place so what uh, I want to uh, share with you today is um, how I use uh, what I learned as the hourglass method to come up with a, well not discussion and conclusion but actually your your theory and discussion uh, doing slides before having coffee anyways anyways there we go okay so and this is a little bit of um, a follow-up on uh, on this weekend's uh, video uh, but that is um, that tries to be uh, just a, a little sharper and also a little more, more prescriptive slash helpful okay so what is the hourglass uh, model in research the hourglass model basically says that um, you start very broadly, broadly broad, let's write that in English, very broadly in your introduction. You narrow um, in the theory. Uh, then you have at the center, you have methods and then uh, um, analysis. And then you broaden uh, in the discussion. Okay, so here's how I use uh, these um, this model to um, to to out, to decide the outline of uh, of my paper. Okay, I begin with um, with a problem, um, you know, or, or 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 a broad question. And this is not it's it's not a research question. It is just a question. Um, you know, um, what uh, what happens when it is people rather than technology who report their own work? Okay some sort of a, a broad, a broad um, question. And what I do is uh, in the conclusion, I answer this question. So basically it's this idea that the first half of your paper mirrors the second half of your paper. So problem, the problem is answered in the, is discussed in the introduction, answered in the conclusion. Then in the theory section, I always have two parts to my theory. One, which is about the broad theoretical contribution um, of the paper. And the second part of the theory talks about the, uh, the model of the phenomenon that, um, you know, that I'm going to use to, to, to discuss that theoretical contribution. In the discussion, I begin the discussion with um, the new model, right? So uh, model, model, and then I move up and design uh, or argue for a more complete theory. So theory, theory, and so and obviously the, I conclude with the solution. Okay, good. So this is very generic, but uh, let's get down to business and see uh, how this works in practice. Okay, so basically every paper that I write, empirical paper, obviously this is um, with data, right? But you can do this with, uh, with theory. I'm actually, I'm uh, writing a literature review uh, and I'm using this exact same model, okay? So basically, in every paper that I write, uh, the, th the, the theory section begins with um, basically uh, a specification of um, the theory in, in, in some theoretical uh, framework, okay? So for my, uh, we're just using the paper that we've been using this week as an example. Um, so my, for my uh, dramaturgical uh, uh, production of performance data paper, I basically had this um, model of um, the production of performance data to, uh, and I began by arguing in the theory section that the production of performance data was um, described as a functional process. So the functional is that it accomplishes some goal. It's, it's useful for something, okay, uh, that benefits the, the organization. And so basically what I argued is that uh, in this model, uh, so the, the current theory, uh, that basically um, information about work is a subproduct of work because uh, work and its representation are tightly coupled. 
and that managers uh, use information about work in information systems to look downwards for surveillance, to, to understand what's going on in the organization and so on and so forth. Okay. And overall, the view was that the production of performance data or pr performance information was automatic. It was done by technology and unproblematic, right? And then what I did is that I did, okay, now in the context of this model, and that was the motivation for my paper, in the context of this, uh, of this model, uh, managers have to uh, impress their leaders to further their, their careers, right? That's what they have to do, okay? So the argument then is that if managers have to do this, then, um, you know, this, this um, begins to open up some fractures in this model begins to say, well, you know, if managers are not only using IT to see in detail downwards, then, you know, what else, uh, what else is new? What else is a, is a contribution here? What else has the, the theory hasn't seen? Okay. So theory section begins by saying, you know, here's the theory and here's uh, or the current theory about a, a specific organizational process. And this is, here's a model of that process, okay? Then in that paper, I use uh, ethnographic data to show an alternative model of this process, which is this one, okay? This is the transition between this figure and this figure is what we saw in our video yesterday, okay? And this model adds a bunch of things that are not here. Namely, that not only are managers um, producing information to impress their leaders, but that leaders are not using this information to monitor downwards, but to impress their own bosses as well. Okay. And so that's the first part of the discussion. The second part of the discussion broadens this model into a, a new theory of the production of performance data in organizations where, um, performance data are not, and technology are not used to see downwards, but to show upwards. Okay. And again, as you recall from Goffman, the idea is that there's nothing better than a cold beer and a good difference. This is the good difference uh, part of things, right? So um, the production of performance data begins to be affordable and problematic. It is used to show upward rather than see downward and it requires people to do representation work in addition of doing regular work, okay? So basically, that's how I do it, right? So for every paper, there is a table with two columns and there are two figures. The first column of the, of, of, of the, um, the table is the, the broad theoretical consensus about a specific process in an organization. In this case, the production of performance data. The figure in the theory section is an application of this theory of what is written in this uh, column to a specific problem that managers or employees face. Okay. Then the first picture in the discussion is an extension or a change uh, to this model. And then the discussion finishes with uh, by adding a second column to the first column that I uh, outlined in the in the theory section, how current theory, n new version of theory, now that we know that the model is this one, and not this one. Okay, as simple as that. Good. So I actually want to show you uh, quickly on uh, Scrivener. And you'll see, uh, this is uh, just an example, but you'll see that uh, basically all of my discussions have two sections and all of my theories have three sections. So these two, this is the first column in the table. This is the figure. This one is sort of like the opening section of the theory where I sort of like broadly motivate uh, the, the research, okay? But this, again, first column of the table this second column of the table, this first figure, this second figure. Okay. 
Good. So let's look at, uh, to wrap up the video, let's look at um, examples in papers, okay? So again, we're going to use the, the two papers that we've been using this week as examples. So the paper that I just showed you, so this one that I published in 2013, the, the problem, so the, you know, the top of the hourglass um, was, I opened the, the paper with a question, uh, how do managers use, and their leaders use information systems, okay? And then first column on the table, information systems are windows. Second column on the table, information systems are shop windows. First figure, the functional model, second figure, the dramaturgical model, okay? So you see it's an hourglass, right? So here, narrow, narrow, here, wider, uh, wider, okay? Second example, the paper that I published with Andrea Gatti in 2018, okay? So the, the problem there, the, the big question, and again, this is not a research question. The research question comes at the end of the theory, is what happens to the quality of information when employees, rather than technology, report their own work? Okay, so first column of the table, quality infor of information is something that technology does. Second column of the table, quality inf of information is something that people do. And you can say, okay, the, the, was this the big insight of the paper? No, of course not. But the, the, the mechanics of this, the dimensions of this are the, the big theoretical contributions, okay? The figure here is the information, uh, 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 what I call the informating model on how, um, which ensures the quality of uh, data and information systems. And my new model was the transfiguration model. So this is the figure at the end of the theory. This is the figure at the beginning of the discussion, okay? So let's just get back to finish to the, the hourglass. So you see the big question, okay? First column of the table, we um, uh, quality of information is done by technology, um, right? Quality of information is done by technology. Second column of the table, quality information is something that people do. First column of the table for 2013 paper, production of performance data is dramaturgical. Second column is uh, function. Uh, sorry, functional. Second column is dramaturgical. And um, this is the simple Goffman figure, and this is the more complex figure with, uh, with all my data, okay? So that's how I use it. And, you know, it, it, like, it's just like super helpful to have this, these two artifacts. So basically what I worry about when I'm thinking about the paper is what is in each of the columns of this table? What is in the column that is in the theory section? What is in the column that is in the... Um, in the discussion section and what are the two figures? What is the figure in the theory section and what is the figure in the discussion section? And basically, once these two things are done, the paper just ba essentially writes itself, right? So that's, that's why I think this is a super, super, super helpful, uh, helpful tip. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll will be streaming uh, throughout the um, the holidays. Only exception will be fifteenth uh, and sixteenth. So Tuesday and Wednesday next week I won't be streaming. Um, this Saturday I got a treat from you. It was actually a viewer request. I'm going to show you how I um, analyze qualitative data with NVivo. And the what I think you'll find uh, fun there is that. Um, you'll see how I do that, knowing that the first draft is still part of the analysis. So how do you do that? Okay, uh, I hope to catch you there. It's uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Paris time. See you then.